Welcome everyone in the virtual audience and many thanks to the Biological Engineering Collaborative organizers for setting up this seminar series. This short presentation is an invitation for the full paper to be presented in the seminar series on October 30th this year. In my paper, I wish to explore some themes related to the use of host organisms in synthetic biology. This presentation will highlight just a few of them. Synthetic biology is usually said to have emerged as a field we know today around 2000. It is not only a highly interdisciplinary endeavor, involving researchers with backgrounds in molecular biology, physics, computation and engineering, among others, but it also consists of various different research programs and approaches. Accordingly, areas of synthetic biology have diverse genealogies and exhibit different epistemic aims and values, as well as different languages and practices. Commentators have identified a number of areas of activity with regard to the focus of research, methodology, backgrounds of researchers, guiding analogies with other fields, or simply by empirical scientometric means. Important distinctions are those between approaches of DNA-based device construction, genome-driven cell engineering, and protocell creation, or between more engineering-inspired and more chemical synthesis-inspired approaches. The lesson from these accounts is that when discussing one aspect of synthetic biology, such as host organisms, one has to keep in mind that certain terms, uses, practices or problems might be specific for one or few of these areas of synthetic biology and look different than others. As I am focusing more on engineering approaches, which favor DNA-based device construction, I would welcome input from those in the audience who have more insights into other areas of synthetic biology. Host organisms in synthetic biology are those organisms into which synthesized genomes or DNA-based constructs, which are meant to encode devices, are introduced. The host is thus a cell whose genome is replaced or manipulated, but which in any case provides the necessary conditions for the transcription and translation of synthesized genomes or engineered constructs. The term host is reminiscent of the relation of a cell to a virus or another symbiont. This terminological choice makes sense given the role of bacterial phages in understanding and facilitating the introduction and effectiveness of foreign DNA in bacterial cells, and more importantly, the role of plasmids and other vectors employed to introduce constructs into cells. While the term host is widely used in many areas of synthetic biology, engineering-oriented workers also commonly use the term chassis. In mechanical engineering and electronics, a chassis is a structure which carries, protects and connects other functionally more specific parts. It is mainly a frame which can also function as an interface to power supplies or other inputs into the system. While the term host connotes symbiosis and thus biological integration and evolution of processes, the term chassis emphasizes a mechanistic notion of decoupling of functional parts and their contexts. The most commonly used host organisms in synthetic biology are E. coli for prokaryotic and yeast for eukaryotic synthetic biology. The obvious reason is that these organisms were already well characterized because they served as model organisms in molecular biology since decades. In particular, DNA-based device construction approaches relied on the E. coli system. For this reason, many standardized parts that can be used to build more complex devices have been developed for this system and they are not easily transferred into another system. Nonetheless, today there are many organisms used in various contexts. Some are chosen because, similar to model organisms, specific knowledge about them has accumulated, for instance, because of their medical or agricultural importance. Others are chosen for specific properties such as small genome size, or for being thermophiles, etc. Furthermore, there are attempts to engineer mammalian cells or to use in vitro systems. The exploration and development of new host organisms is strongly connected with the notion that synthetic biology has to move out of the research lab, where the development of basic parts and design principles is in the focus, to applications in industry, medicine, agriculture and other fields. While there are well-established industrial uses of engineered cells, the potential of applications is usually seen as not fully explored. 
To do this would require organisms that can flourish in various environments and fulfill complex functions beyond the specific tasks implemented in the constructed devices. As one practitioner of synthetic biology remarked in 2016, quote, although vast research efforts have focused on the programming aspect, far less have focused on the chassis or host organism itself, unquote. A similar point could be made about the literature in the history, philosophy, and social studies of synthetic biology. While there are certainly other topics as well, such as intellectual property, when authors in these fields address the conceptual and material dimensions of synthetic biology, they are often focused on the role of standardized parts or the design of functional circuits, often with an eye on the relation between synthetic biology and modeling practices and systems biology. Many of the questions asked in an HBSS context could be addressed from a new perspective when host organisms are taken as vantage point. Among them are those regarding the status of synthetic biology as a science oriented towards understanding and discovery or towards products and applications, regarding reductionism and the mechanistic outlook built into its core assumptions, as well as regarding inter the interdisciplinary nature of the field and the relations of synthetic biology to industry, medicine, agriculture, and other fields. Here, I wish to highlight only two themes. The expression, a life of their own, used in the title of this presentation has two meanings with respect to host organisms in synthetic biology. On the one hand, philosophers of biology, when approaching the topic, can't help thinking of model organisms. While there are similarities, there are also important differences. In that sense, host organisms have a life of their own. On the other hand, workers in synthetic biology tend to address host organisms as rather neutral containers whose performance is then engendered by the engineered constructs introduced into them. Instead, as evolved organisms, hosts exhibit a number of properties and dynamic processes which enable and influence the function of the constructs. In this sense, as well, they have a life of their own. Regarding the first theme, a comparison could be made on various levels. I mention only two. First, Scholarship on model organisms has pointed out the importance of communities and the infrastructures and social arrangements which are necessary for collaboration and for taking advantage of each other's work. Similarly, host organism communities need to agree on standards and exchange resources. Second, it is not the purpose of host organisms to represent other organisms, at least not in contexts where potential applications are emphasized over gaining understanding. And yet, the work done in one organism can serve as a model to develop similar approaches in another organism, just as research designs travel across model organism communities. Regarding the second theme, it can be observed that the unique biological properties of organisms, which are the result of their evolution and natural ecology, were initially not overlooked, but seen as a problem to be overcome. The term chassis points to the aim to tame the host and turn it into a neutral service unit. Researchers exploring new potential host organisms instead often cite such properties, such as the ability to live in high temperatures or to exhibit robust DNA repair as unique advantages. I will leave it there for the moment, but let me just briefly acknowledge the literature used in this presentation. And finally, Thank you for watching it. In my paper, planned to be discussed on October 30th at 4 p.m. Central European time, I wish to develop these themes further and I'm looking very much forward to your comments.